it's not surprising to us that headset uh, distribution and saturation has been slower on the consumer side, mainly a, a gaming device for today. Uh, but we certainly feel that when more employees throughout America and really the world start to touch these things literally and metaphorically every day in their jobs, it's going to trickle down to the consumer, uh, much like we saw with computers you know, a couple decades ago. All right, so 4,700 stores <laughs> and there are, uh, my goodness, 17,000 of these units. Yep. What sort of results are you able to show that gets Walmart to make that kind of investment? And, yeah. and are there certain types of work where this improves performance better than others? So last year, or two years ago, when we started working with Walmart, we were really focused on operations, process, procedures for store managers. There's a, a, a spill in aisle six. Uh, where is there an outage of bananas in, in the produce department, right? Um, interacting with customers, things like that. And that worked really well in the Walmart academies where they train uh, their employees, you know, from store manager, assistant manager, all the way down. And now, here we are, you know, less than two years later, and Walmart said, hey, this was so successful in the academies, and all 200 of them, that we want to put this in every store. And now how can we touch cashiers? How can we touch janitors? How can we touch some of those mid-level managers? Folks that, you know, candidly don't get access to the very best training daily that a store manager would, and now how do you give them a, a technology tool that's worked really, really well for store managers, and how do we democratize that across all of Walmart's one million employees? Yeah, you know, one of the steadfast criticisms of, of VR, at least to date, has been the fact that when you put one of these headsets on, maybe not this one specifically, when you yep. put one of these VR headsets on and you start going through yep. whatever it is that your you know, application, yep. exactly, which I, cer I certainly have experienced. Yep. How do you cut down on that? Because I would imagine that's a key part of success, especially when you're talking about something like employee training. Yeah, so everything we do at Striver, uh, we work really hard to make sure that it's a equilibrium, comfortable situation. And what I mean by that is if you're sitting there and your brain thinks you're sitting uh, and your body thinks you're sitting and all of a sudden that headset puts you on a virtual roller coaster, your brain and your equilibrium start going crazy and you're like, okay, something's not right and that's where you get yeah. nauseous. So with Walmart specifically and all of our customers, we work really hard to make sure we're putting you in pretty much a static decision-making moment. Uh, we're not moving the camera. We're not running you down an aisle. Uh, we're making it very, very comfortable for the employee. And, and that's really important, like you guys said. I mean, John, like you said, this has to work at the employee level for it to likely trickle down as Christmas presents for folks this fall, and, and we work hard for that. So does that mean that you think maybe long-term it works better as an enterprise product than a gaming product? It, it may. I don't think as a gaming product. I think gaming is always going to be really, really good. Um, as a more massive consumer product, you own one, right? Someone yep. like yourself to yep. have it and use it daily. Um, I, I think the enterprise is going to outpace the consumer, uh, but that's today. I mean, I think we're gonna see a really, really cool trickle down effect. Um, Oculus knows that, they've been a phenomenal partner. Walmart certainly on the leading edge and you, know, you could argue that they're more important than anybody to, to VR succeeding uh, and that, that's pretty cool.